West Side Story. The popular 1957 Broadway play tells the tale of star-crossed lovers Tony and Maria. Inspired by Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, this story is set in the mid-1950s in the Upper West Side of New York City. The play, with music from the late Leonard Bernstein and the late Stephen Sondheim, was adapted into a film which won 10 Oscars in 1961 to include Best Picture. Now, in 2021, veteran director Steven Spielberg has reimagined the movie, still set in the mid-1950s and still with the warring gangs, the Sharks and the Jets, obstructing a blooming forbidden love. I'm Ronald Young Jr. and I'm leaving the theater. This is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing West Side Story. West Side Story. <sighs> Written by Tony Kushner, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Ansel Eld for El- Ooh, I'm going to mess that up. Starring Ansel Elgort, Rachel Ziegler, Ariana DeBose, David Alvarez, Mike Faced, Rita Marino. Brian Darcy James, Corey Stoll, Josh Andres Riviera, Idis Menes, Mike Iveson, Yamila Velasquez, Annalise Cabero, Yasmin Alers, Jamie Harris, and Curtis Cook. All right. Well, uh, this is West Side Story. Um, not to be confused with the 1961 film of the same name. Uh, and at least one of the same actors in Rita Moreno. Uh, This was redone. This is a, I mean, a remake, obviously, uh, by the incomparable Steven Spielberg, (laughs) who, um, you know, has a track record. He's a great, he's a great director. He has set the scene. I mean, he has set the standard for uh, filmmaking in this era. So, I mean, classic movie. You can go back to his stuff. There's like whole things written about Steven Spielberg and what a Spielberg film is. He's inspired a whole generation of people behind him, including J.J. Abrams and others. Uh, So Spielberg is no slouch. Uh, And clearly he is what I would call old Hollywood at this point. Like he was new Hollywood at one point, but now he's old Hollywood. He is the establishment. He is the guy that (laughs) took shots at Netflix and streaming, talking about people got to be in the theater. He's one of those guys. He's one of those guys thinking that, you know, it's kind of unfair that streaming gets the same advantage of movies. He's, He's an old school guy. I don't know how he, I don't ever really know how he feels about, um, I don't ever really know how he feels about progress in some cases. And if it is evidenced by this movie, which I think is going to win a hundred Oscars, uh, not because it's good, but because it's old Hollywood. Let me explain. La La Land, uh, <laughs> end of explanation. Um, 
Hollywood loves movies about itself. And this, this movie is an ode to old school Hollywood. Hollywood in the golden age. Uh, the first West Side Story came out in 1961, and it was based on the musical that came out in 1957, all written by a bunch of white dudes, which is not to marginalize anybody or just say, hey, you know, whatever. But their ideas on race, romance, and sex, and, uh, and racism, and gentrification, and the neighborhood changing, all of that stuff leaves something to be desired, I would say. And that comes through in the plot of this movie. Now, before anybody thinks I'm being unfair, I want to make some admissions here. The music is great. The dancing is fantastic. The costumes are very good. Uh, great performances from acting, especially I liked the actor that played Bernardo, which I cannot look up his name right now. I just probably said it. And uh, Mike Faced, who played uh, riff those are my two favorite performances in the movie of course anita was also great loved her uh she was great didn't really care about maria or tony that much and mostly because uh this plot bothered me i mean this plot but it starts off with racism and i'm like oh did i forget so I was forced to watch this movie in high school and I watched it, you know, either in music class or Spanish class or one of them where the teacher was just like, you know, hung over and decided to let us watch a movie. And I remember back then being very confused as to what was happening. And they were like, oh, it's an offshoot of Romeo and Juliet, which I also don't like. I want to be clear. I do not like, <laughs> I don't like Romeo and Juliet. I don't like West Side Story. Um, I know there's comparisons. I know there's two gangs fighting and all that stuff. But to set this, to make this movie in 2021, still set it back then in 1961 or 1957 and have it be about, oh, my God, the neighborhood's changing. And, you know, these guys are basically stopping short of saying like they say uh, a couple of racial slurs, including the S, the one that starts with S. That is a slur for uh, Latino people. Uh, and they said that. And I remember when I heard it, I'm just like, hey, man, I don't want to i don't want to do this i don't know if i want to do this i'm like sitting there and i'm just like i don't want to do i don't know if i want to do this and so between that and then like the lack of black folks in this movie and then the only time they show up one time is a very prominent janitor which i'm like what what and then the second time you see a black person in this, in this movie is uh he's uh selling somebody a gun so i'm like yo man this movie like uh, with with regards to the race, like you could just tell it has like old Hollywood white dudes all over this. And as somebody who's like, I'm just a regular guy watching movies, you know what I mean? Like I've I've gotten some opportunities to, to you know to review and to have my voice heard and all that. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate those opportunities. I genuinely do. But I, I'm looking at critic reviews of this movie and they're all fantastic. And I don't see anybody critically examining like the glaring problems with the plot in this movie, the short sightedness or the fact that th there's things that happen in the plot that are just nonsensical, nonsensical. And I know it's a musical. It is like. I, and I'm going to assume I'm going to I'm going to talk spoilers, because if you haven't seen West Side Story, I mean, it came out in 1961. It's basically the same plot. They don't change much of anything. Uh, I don't think they change much of anything in here. Uh, I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, and, and I, I, I did not. I did want to keep watching it because of everything I said about the visuals, about, again, the music's are good. The costume is good. Like the blocking is good. All that stuff is good. You will get sucked into watching this movie and be like, man, this is a good movie. But if you're anything like Ronald Young Jr., it's going to be hard for you to sit up, sit up and watch a movie like this with the things that are happening in the plot. And I'll now say them. I just, I think I've given everybody enough warning. They're like, well, Ronald, what are you talking about? Okay, so the fact that Tony and Maria meet. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. So the, the the first thing is, like, the Jets and the Sharks, they act like they're equivalent gangs, and they're not. I just want to remind everybody, these are Puerto Ricans moving into a neighborhood in which things are changing around them, and the white people are essentially terrorizing them. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it literally starts with a scene of vandalism, a bunch of guys painting a fence. The other guys come to defend their neighborhood, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, they're equals. You guys are brutes. Don't mess with the white people. I'm like, no, this isn't equality. And that's how I know a white person wrote this, because only, like, this is the type of short-sightedness that comes from looking at two different races and saying, oh, they're both bad. They're both bad. 
bad. They're both doing bad things. I'm like, one of these people are trying to live their lives and defend themselves as they're being terrorized by the others. Not to mention the cops come to break it up. And immediately I'm like, what are the police going to do? Like, what are the police going to do except be on the side of the jets? Like, what are we even talking about here? Uh, so that bothered me. Even though I'm enjoying watching the movie, I'm enjoying the singing, the dancing. I'm enjoying that. I don't really like musicals. That's the one part. The second part is Tony and Maria meeting, which, of course, they fall in love at love at first sight, which is OK with me at first, except for the fact that Tony's all of a sudden, oh, man, I love her, all that stuff. And then you find out that Tony basically pulled uh, Mark Wahlberg and like racially, <laughs> racially assaulted a dude who was in jail for a year for almost killing a dude. That would be a hate crime in 2021. And they're just like, yeah, he almost killed a dude, but he went to jail and now he feels better. I'm like, what changed him in jail? In jail, jail is the most racist place on earth. There's no way in the world he went to jail for a year or prison for a year, came back and was like, nah, I'm not in this saw his neighborhood changing and then all of a sudden it's like nah you know what i'm good <laughs> you know what I mean? it's all it's all good you know what i mean i just free love and he like there's nothing that indicates that he's actually changed except for the fact that he falls in love with this brown girl which is mentioned several times in the movie there's several times in the movie in which brown people are saying hey yo man do what what do you like about this brown girl like what like, what's going on here? Like, you just you just like brown girls? Which I'm saying, like, I'm like that to me. I'm like, that's automatically fetishization for me as I'm watching. And I'm like, I don't understand how you just got out of prison. Oh, God, you meet this. You meet her. And all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, I love her. I'm in love. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. What? Didn't you just try to kill a brown person before you started the Jets? I got to remind y'all, he started the Jets. Oh, racist gang. <laughs> Which... Like, come on, like the sharks. The thing that gets me is like the sharks really only exist as a defense against the Jets. That's it. Like they don't like they're, they're not out here just trying like they just only exist as a defense against the Jets. And everyone's talking to them like, oh, don't fight the gringos. Don't fight the gringos. I'm like, dog, if they don't fight the gringos, they're going to be painting the town, ripping out stuff, wanting the Irish bars back, all that stuff, man. They were doing like they start the movie with like a vandalism of a whole town. Like how how are we going to sit here? How is anyone in their right minds walking out of this movie rooting for the Jets? I'm not even done. So you start there like all of a sudden this is this like, you know, uh. A uh, hate crime guy goes out there, meets Maria, falls in love with this uh, with this brown girl, which is fine. Then all of a sudden, one day later, one day later, he stabs her brother to death and inadvertently causes the death of his own best friend. She knows this. And he shows up to her house to say, I'm about to turn myself into the cops. But uh, before I go, uh, but before I go, I wanted to see you. She's like, no, if you leave, the worst thing you could do is if you leave me. And then they sleep together. What? Who wrote this? Who wrote this? Are y'all serious? Like, I, I feel like y'all been keeping this away from me for like years. Maybe I didn't notice this as a kid. I'm like, yo, he killed. He killed your brother. He killed your brother. He killed your brother. Like, you don't love him. You met him last night. Are you serious? Like, no. And you're going to get an Oscar for this? Like, what? A, what? What lecherous scumbag wrote this? Like, what are we talking about here? So all of that happens. And then at the very end, Anita, who was married to uh, Anita, who was with Bernardo, Anita, who's with Bernardo, all of a sudden, uh, she's running an errand for Maria in order to save her, which I don't know why she did. If I'm, if I'm, um, like somehow Maria convinced, uh, Anita that it was okay that she slept with <laughs> Tony after he killed her own brother and Anita's basically betrothed. And she's like, nah, you love, if you were in love, then you know what I'm talking about. Like, no, you met him last night. You're not in love. This is infatuation. This is a, a like sexual, sexual obsession. This is not love. Like, I don't, it's not love. It's not love. I don't care. Yo, at me, at, at, oh, it's Big Ron, at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N, not love. Uh, so you're going to sit here, not love. She goes over to run this errand. And when she's there, the Jets, like, basically mock her lock her in a room and then almost sexually assault her hold on there's a train going over now obviously this movie is pg pg 13 so uh and i apologize for anyone i should have said trigger warning before i got into that but 
like again they almost show this i mean this almost happens and i remember thinking like what are we what what why <sighs> yeah so i can't say this isn't a good movie because i couldn't stop watching it i was very compelling all of that i'll probably watch it again I will be upset and I want everyone who hears this to not, I don't want anybody, there's really no argument here for anybody to come back to me and say, oh, well, Ronald, you gotta understand, you know, I'm like, come on, man, like, they, like at some point, y'all gotta, like, look at movies and be like, this plot is nonsensical, okay, the costumes are nice, I liked it, but this plot doesn't make sense, like, you gotta be able to critically analyze the stuff, say, I don't know about that, maybe not in 2021, and I'm saying, watching this in 2021, it didn't make me feel good in some ways, like, when they were singing and dancing and having a good time, it was cool, and it is grittier and all that and darker than the original, that's cool, and yes, Steven Spielberg knows how to make a movie, that's cool, yeah he might get an oscar for this like i get all that but like I, I just want there at least to be a conversation where they say hey man you know maybe we should have updated the plot a little bit for 2021 you know maybe i don't know maybe you know some of this stuff we don't do they, like i just feel like they always have all these redemptions for all these characters and then when somebody rightfully kills tony he deserved to die when someone rightfully kills tony the only person that receives any real punishment is a brown person and i'm like if anything he should be a hero he finally stopped all the killing and then all of a sudden somehow the death of tony is what brings the jets and the sharks together and the death of bernardo and the death of uh the death of bernardo and riff didn't like, are you kidding me? Tony caused all this. Y'all were at that rumble. Y'all didn't see how that went down. Like, Tony, like, being meddling and doing his dumb stuff was in the way. Man, you gonna fight? You just met her last night, dog. What are you talking about? Whew. Now, I, I don't want to hear y'all send me a bunch of Shakespeare. I don't want to hear y'all like, oh, you just Romeo and Juliet, man. You got to read the classics. I don't want to hear any of that. I think classics are garbage. I think some of those plot points are trash. I think, like, if there's, if you're going to have this loose sense of romance with this twisted sense of morality, like, I'm just, I'm not here for it. So, it's three of five stars. It is a three-star movie. It's probably going to win every Oscar. And I want to make sure y'all heard me say it. It probably will win every Oscar. I won't be happy about it. Y'all can hit me up. I hate it like I hate potlucks. Y'all can hit me up. Whatever. I get it. All I'm saying is, like, I think we got to critically analyze things like this and at least say, hey, I mean, is this what we needed to do in 2021? Is Spielberg, old Hollywood, the one to do this movie again? Like, what are we, what, what, what's, uh, what's going on here? And even though Rita Moreno was the, uh, was the, um, executive producer, I have to remind you, she is also old Hollywood, which I mean, respectfully, I have a lot of respect for Rita, Rita Moreno. I think she did a great job in this movie too. I love seeing her on screen, but there's a lot about this where I'm just like, man, oh, come on, man. Like, I, I don't know, man. I hope Gen Z and the millennials have my back on this one. Like there's no way in the world you walk into this movie and like, oh, mom and dad, y'all, this this is what we bang it with <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah um yeah guys i'm i'm sorry i i maybe i, I snapped a little bit on this one but with that leaving the theater is a production of oh it's big ron studios theme music by the mysterious breakmaster cylinder to find out more about this show and other oh it's big ron Studios shows follow me on twitter and instagram at oh it's big ron that's at o-h-i-t-s-b-i-g-r-o-n if you like this show, I host another show on the Pushkin Industries podcast network called Solvable. Check that out wherever you listen. Leaving the theater, we'll be back soon. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being patient with me. I know I, I know I know I went off on this one, but thanks for listening. I appreciate y'all.